Thank you very much. This was probably the kindest invitation to speak I've ever heard, so may I get it in written form, please? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, uh, distinguished professors, uh, dear colleagues, friends of Europe, it's really a, an honor and a pleasure to be able to, to address you from this uh, very place, and it's a pleasure to see many of my masters uh, sitting in the, uh, in the audience. Uh, I, I'm pleased to see so many of Poland's distinguished ambassadors uh, around and uh, it's really an honor to see you here and I also am pleased to see uh, colleagues uh, from the Diplomatic Corps uh, with whom I'm working on a, uh, on, a daily, uh, on a daily basis. The subject of our today's discussion, the future of Europe, is uh, both an ambitious one but uh, in the midst of running daily businesses, I think also a very important one to discuss because we need to take a broader look at uh, some of the consequences of the actions we're taking uh, on a daily basis or the lack of actions, not just in the short term, but also in the mid or even longer term. In other words, we need to become more strategic, or we as the EU, shall fail as uh, simple as that. So how should EU act and what should we do? Uh, I therefore look forward to listening to the thoughts and perhaps the recommendations for actions which will come uh, from the eminent speakers here on, uh, on the podium, Professor Andrew uh, Moravczyk from the Princeton University and Dr. Uh, Paola Subaci from the Chatham House. I'm also privileged uh, to speak in the presence of Dr. Uh, Andrzej Olechowski, whose name will definitely go down in uh, Polish history textbooks among various uh, uh, other accomplishments. Uh, he was the one uh, who was the Polish foreign minister uh, personally delivered the application of Poland for membership uh, in the European Union. At that time to the Greek presidency uh, of the Council of the EU in April 1994. What a historic dimension it seems uh, seen from, uh, from day, today's point of view. It is uh, not my ambition to offer you a comprehensive depiction of the state of play or the way forward for the European Union. Uh, we are going to listen to their respective takes on the subject by, by our uh, guest speakers. But let me, however, draw your attention to some of uh, uh, the key features of the debate on, on the European Union as we see them from the vantage, of the, uh, vantage point of the foreign ministry. So, ladies and gentlemen, less than a month ago, uh, the Commission's President, uh, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, in his State of the Union address, said that our union is not in a great shape. And it would be very difficult to argue with this premise. When, uh, whether it is uh, the economic front in the aftermath of the crisis and the still sluggish growth in the most of the EU, the immigration crisis, the instability in the Union's neighborhood and tensions resulting from it, coupled with the loss of confidence in the EU and its institutions widespread across many member states, we know that we are indeed in trouble. Add to that speculations concerning Brexit or Brexit, and we're not getting any nearer to the satisfactory state of affairs. What does Poland think of these key issues of today? On the economy, the key issue is definitely regaining capacity to generate growth and create jobs. Something which today seems obvious and it's being repeated as a mantra. First, lowering of the energy costs, in particular compared to our US allies, is a must. The second area worth exploring is liberalizing sector, the sector of services. We should avoid neo-protectionist tendencies in the EU, as uh, in the long term they will hamper our competitiveness. Thirdly, and that is very uh, much work uh, in, uh, in progress, the European Fund for Strategic Investments, uh, an initiative which is also subject to discussions for many months. Fourthly, Definitely from the Polish perspective, the signing of a balanced, though ambitious transatlantic trade and investment partnership can be a boost to our economies. And finally, the success in turning EU into a knowledge-based economy with thriving cooperation between the worlds uh, of business and academia uh, will be instrumental in this regard. 
On the foreign policy aspects, and this will be my second point, we need to first of all be ambitious and be open. We need to speak with one voice. Poland doesn't want to be portrayed, and this is also very important for me to underline, as a single issue country with an inclusive focus on, uh, on, on the eastern flank, as some call it, or the Russian aggression against Ukraine. And we are active in many other fields, and we try to uh, prove that actively. Nevertheless, we worry about Ukraine and the Ukraine fatigue syndrome that it, one can perceive in some of the EU's quarters. Despite the gravity of challenges emanating from the South, uh, we as the EU need to remain committed to helping Ukraine. In the months to come, Poland will be actively following the debate on the European global strategy, due to be presented by the High Representative Mogherini in June next year. And I will not miss this opportunity to assure you that Poland is and will continue to be among the champions of the further EU's enlargement, because we think that the open door policy still matters. On the immigration challenges, Poland has proved that it is a responsible country acting in the spirit of our European solidarity. Migration of third country nationals requires the adoption of an overall vision and a complex, consistent and a long-term approach. Relocation may constitute one of its elements, but it cannot solve the existing problems. We are critical of putting into question the very principles of the Schengen Agreement in the context of a spike in the migration wave and putting up fences within the Schengen area. Sacrificing Schengen, the concept of Europe with no internal borders, which is the real, real breakthrough in putting into effect an unconstrained flow of people, would be an acceptable, unacceptable price. On the need for greater legitimacy of the, of the EU, again a subject broadly discussed these days in, in Europe, we are among those uh, insisting on greater cooperation among national parliaments on EU matters and the greater input into the EU decision-making process. However, this fine-tuning of the role of the national parliaments should occur within the existing treaty regime and without distorting the existing institutional equilibrium. Perhaps we should be more bold and innovative uh, in involving European citizens directly, also by using to a greater degree the potential of the internet and of the social media. The experience of the European Citizens Initiative has so far been rather disappointing in that regard. On the Grexit. After the summer, the speculations have been shelved, hopefully for good, uh, and we have every reason to wish success to the Greek government in its reform efforts. Poland has no interest in experiencing political and economic turbulences, which would be inevitable in the case of Greece leaving the EU. On the UK, another important issue, and its place in the EU. The Brexit debate is definitely a fascinating and fundamental one, also from our point of view. To put it bluntly, the European club without the UK would be a totally different uh, and definitely a less attractive one for Poland. And I'm looking at the colleague from the British Embassy to notice this <laughs> correctly. Uh, we definitely think UK is part of Europe and so one should not create the, the impression that, uh, that the, the channel is broader than the Atlantic. It's not. Uh, Therefore, avoiding the Brexit scenario is one of our desired objectives and uh, we work with our British partners uh, as we share many of the designs for reforming the European Union. The Union definitely needs reforms and so we, agreed on, uh, we agree on, on that point. Definitely less red tape, fewer obstacles for businesses, strict application of the subsidiarity principle by the EU institutions. Here we are on the same page with our British partners. We, uh, where we probably differ is in the approach towards changing the EU tr treaties. As you know, Poland is very uh, critical on that. And uh, we definitely have diverging views on the question of limiting social benefits uh, to intra-EU migrants, which in our view is a clear violation of the single market principle.
Having said that, I'm optimistic that a good compromise will be found and that the British people can be convinced and will decide uh, in a referendum uh, this still unconfirmed but most likely uh, date of it being October next uh, year that uh, remaining in the EU is a good idea and a good solution for Britain. Better probably than one of a splendid isolation. Finally, and this will be my last point, uh, let me add that Poland will continue to be, uh, will continue to be a non-Eurozone EU member state for the foreseeable future for the years to come. And we are there, therefore very sensitive about any ideas of further institutionalizing of the, uh, of the Eurogroup, uh, creating a club within a club or something one sometimes calls uh, a two-speed Europe. To some extent, the two-speed Europe already exists because uh, the membership in the very Eurozone and the current EMU reforms of the uh, of the last few years uh, imply great level of economic uh, interconnectedness. But we advise against going too far in this direction. We pledge for inclusiveness of the European project and we think that the integrity of the EU as such must be preserved. Uh, and the inclusiveness of any future EMU reform must remain the clear, strong pillar for further actions. And ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in one of his best movies, Annie Hall, uh, Woody Allen said that life is divided into the horrible and the miserable. I sincerely hope that uh, what, we going to hear from our, what we are going to hear from our speakers will prove Allen wrong, uh, and that there is hope for the European continent and for the European integration uh, project. I'm personally convinced, but I'm an optimist by nature, that the resources we have in the EU are sufficient for us to prosper even uh, in a demanding global environment. Either we shall face the future collectively, or we shall slide into irrelevance, uh, each of uh, on their own uh, account. Greater level of integration in some areas, and let me mention here only the pressing need for genuine cooperation in the area of common and foreign security policy. A strong global voice of Europe is necessary. But we don't have to create a single European state to begin to thrive. I look forward to the inspiring speeches and the debate, and I thank you very much for your attention.